Welcome to the LCGC podcast, getting more out of your GC using thermal desorption. This podcast is brought to you by Marks International, a world leader in the manufacture of instrumentation and sampling equipment for thermal desorption. To find out more, please visit them on the web at www.marks.com. And now here's your host for this podcast, Roger Winters, contributing editor for LCGC. Hello, everyone. This is Roger Winters, contributing editor for LCGC, and I'm here with Elizabeth Wolfenden, the founding director of Marks International Limited. Thank you for being here today, Elizabeth. That's fine. To get started, what is thermal desorption? Well, in short, it's a very versatile sample introduction tool, really, for cash chromatography. And it's based on the same fundamental principles as GC itself. It's great because it combines sample preparation, analyte extraction, and the injection all into one efficient and fully automated process. Uh, Just quickly to summarize what generally happens, um, normally you have tubes that either contain sorbent or small samples of material, and these are heated up in a flow of carrier gas. Any volatile or semi-volatile organic compounds are released. They go straight into the carrier gas stream. These extracted vapors are then selectively concentrated, typically in an electrically cooled focusing trap, and then they're injected super fast into the GC analytical column. So exactly what sorts of compounds can thermal desorption deal with? Well, that's the great thing about thermal desorption. It it works really uh, for everything from very uh, volatile compounds, things like acetylene and ethane, up to semi-volatiles like uh, six-ring PAHs or heavy phthalates. In fact, uh, well-designed thermal desorption systems You can also accommodate very reactive species at the same time and on the same platform. Um, Now, I love thermal desorption, but it isn't suitable for everything. Um, It can't be used for most inorganic gases, um, permanent gases, things like oxygen and nitrogen. But it does work pretty much for every organic compound that you can run through a GC. The only real exceptions to this are non-volatiles, i.e. compounds that are higher boiling than about NC44, and methane itself, which is a bit too hard to trap. Why should I use thermal desorption and not some other sample introduction technique for GC? Hmm. Well, uh, thermal desorption, I think, offers many advantages over other GC sample preparation and introduction techniques. Uh, For one thing, it gives you much better sensitivity than most other methods. And that's because all of the retained or trapped compounds that you have in your sample tube can be transferred to the analyzer if you need to. Uh, You haven't got any solvent diluting everything, and you can get up to a million-fold enhancement in sensitivity for gas or air samples, for example. Uh, Thermal desorption also reduces interferences because the compounds go straight into the gas phase. And uh, thermal desorption standard methods typically quote better than 95% extraction efficiency versus the 75 or 80% best case, which is typical for liquid extraction. I think, um, last but not least, thermal desorption is also uh, beautifully automated and very versatile, Um, not just in terms of the analyte volatility range, but also in concentration. Um, We have users going everything from subparts per trillion right up to percent levels. Uh, People can look at different sample types. You've got solids, liquids, or gas phase samples. And we have a really wide application range. So uh, why, why do some labs still stick with uh, traditional liquid extraction? No, I think that's a very good question, and I wonder it myself. Uh, but I think the, the honest answer is that until recently, thermal desorption was limited to being a one-shot technique. 
Now, what that means is once you'd thermally desorbed a sample, there really wasn't anything left to repeat the analysis. So if anything went wrong or if you wanted to try different conditions, it, it made it really difficult, and that did put people off. Um, but this has all changed in the last uh, 10 years or so. The latest TD systems, uh, both manual and automated systems, allow you to quantitatively recollect the split portion of TD samples so that analyses can be really easily repeated and multiple times if necessary. Uh, so this means you can confirm results, you can validate methods, and you can allow multiple tests to be carried out on a single sample. Earlier, you mentioned application range. I thought that thermal desorption was mostly used for environmental air monitoring. Now, well, you're right, and a lot of people think this, and, and actually it's true. Uh, TD is widely used for environmental air monitoring. It's probably the most popular uh, air monitoring method, but it's also now used across many other GC applications. Um, actually, going right back to the beginning, a lot of the early drive for thermal desorption development um, came out of occupational hygiene. Um, the scientists there really wanted to find an alternative to the old charcoal tubes and carbon disulfide, uh, one that was less toxic from an analyst's perspective and that gave them better detection limits. Um, that was needed both because the limit levels were dropping and because it enabled them to use passive sampling as well as pumped. So as we stand now, um, air monitoring, the air monitoring field itself has expanded, so it's really wide. It goes everything from workplace air monitoring, urban air monitoring, to odor and stack emission testing. And there are pretty much standard methods to cover all of those examples. So we have ISO methods, SEND methods, EPA and ASTM. And then moving away from air, um, other key areas include material emission testing. Um, we're talking here about uh, primarily building products from an indoor environment perspective, car trim, uh, electronics, furniture. We've also got uh, consumer and product safety, e-cigarettes are a really big topic in that area at the moment. Uh, forensic and homeland defense type applications. Uh, at the other end of the scale, we've got flavor and fragrance profiling. And then um, there's plain old residual solvents and the critical issue of product quality control. Um, thermal desorption is used for everything from residual solvents in pharmaceuticals and adhesives to looking at um, color changes in leather, and taint in spice. So tell me about some of the most exciting recent applications of thermal desorption. Oh, right. Well, as uh, thermal desorption technology has obviously improved over, over the years, and it can now be used in some really interesting areas, um, some of the hottest topics at the moment are breath monitoring. This is uh, for disease diagnosis, human diseases. Um, but uh, we do have some scientists monitoring animal breath as well. Someone even went to the boat and um, was monitoring whale breath using thermal desorption. Um, we've got other uh, research labs looking at uh, how plants and insects use organic chemicals to communicate. Um, there's also the big issue of climate change and the impact of VOCs on atmospheric chemistry or the evolution of organic air pollution. Uh, we can actually go back in time by looking at air bubbles in different layers of ice in the Arctic and Antarctic, so that's really interesting. And then, um, again, a completely different area, but I think it's fascinating, is museum conservation. Uh, things like making sure that the materials used to build display cases, for example, don't release chemicals that could damage works of art or, or other artifacts. I mean, it's, you're really only limited by your imagination um, to what thermal desorption can be used for. Thank you for that informative overview, Elizabeth. 
I uh, appreciate you being here today. This has been Roger Winters, contributing editor of LCGC. Thanks to all for listening. You've been listening to the LCGC podcast, getting more out of your GC using thermal desorption. This podcast was brought to you by Marks International, a world leader in the manufacturer of instrumentation and sampling equipment for thermal desorption. To find out more, please visit them on the web at www.marks.com.